I'm here to talk to you about the, the new innovation, the, the drug-coated balloons. And it's not really so new this, uh, this time around because it's been around for about two years. And there are other companies out now that will, that's trying to produce this type of uh, um, uh, technology. Uh, of course, I have no disclosures. And so as what Dr. Vishal put out there before, PAD is very prevalent and it's very important for us to kind of um, evaluate our patients, especially patients with CAD um, uh, for peripheral arterial disease because it's, uh, it's a, it's a life-threatening uh, situation per, uh, in, in essence. And why do we, do, why do we check uh, um, CAD patients for PAD? Because they have the same type of risk factors that, that uh, CAD patients have, cigarette smoking, diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and, and so forth. So um, Dr. Vishal so eloquently provided us the tools uh, in our toolbox, and pretty much uh, plain balloon angioplasty, which he says is the, kind of the gold standard of what we do in peripheral arterial disease, but patency rates are really low after one year, about 60%. Um, and then we have endovascular stenting, and he showed you pretty much the types of stentings that we have. It's actually just a, a metallic tube that props open the vessel, a scaffolding to open the vessel, and um, its uh, efficacy is 95%, technically is, is easy to do, and 88% uh, uh, primary patency rate in about one to three years. And he showed you the Supera stents, which is very bendable, and I uh, showed you the Zilber uh, uh, PTX, which is a drug-coated balloon. It doesn't really uh, elude, uh, elude any type of drug when, we, the, the patient is, uh, when the stent is placed. Um, again, he showed you directional atherectomy, he showed a rotoblader and laser uh, atherectomy, which is, we all do, uh, which we do here at Mount Sinai Hospital uh, to uh, uh, fight the uh, PAD. So um, if you guys have been here before, I, I call the drug coated balloons a new fad, but it's not really a fad. It's actually going to probably be here to stay as one of the main type of um, treatments that we do for peripheral arterial disease. And so um, what makes up a drug-coated balloon? Well, there's a coating process. Either they spray it, they dip it. Um, there's an excipient which uh, we use to help move the, uh, the drug over to the vessel. Uh, again, the drug that we use is paclitaxel, first-generation drug they use in coronary artery stenting. And the balloon platform is very important in terms of getting the drug down to the target area that we want to go to. And again, like I said, these are other companies that have um, drug-coated balloons out there. The first two, the Lutonix and the Impact, are FDA approved for use in the United States. Uh, but again, there are so many other type of um, 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 companies producing these types of balloons. Um, just to uh, show you the device characteristics and the two uh, balloons that are um, being uh, are being FDA approved by us is the Impact Admiral Lutonix. Um, Pactitaxel, this the 3.5, the drug is on uh, the impact, and, uh, and two, gram, two micrograms only to Latonix. Uh, and then the excipient really is the uh, urea and uh, polysorbitol to the drug coated balloon for the Latonix. And you can see that there, we could treat different diameters, different lengths, uh, and uh, there's different lengths in terms of the sheet, uh, the, the balloon length uh, shaft. And then we could also use different types of introducer sheets that would do our procedures. So influence factors of drug-coated balloon, the durability, again, going back into how we could get that balloon uh, down into the uh, target area, the deliverability of the drug to get on to the stenotic area and the uptake, the residency of the, of the drug into the tissue. So um, just a little bit of... Uh, kind of an a A&P situation here with the restonata cascade. When we inflate the balloon in the um, uh, arterial bed, uh, pretty much we're causing a kind of a controlled dissection of the, of the, of the, of the vessel. And what, the, what happens then is that we crush the plaque, we stretch the artery, and then we de-anthelialize uh, the, with the process. As soon as that happens, you know, there's a uh, kind of a, a platelet, uh, you know, platelets and fibrin deposits are placed into injured sites because the inflammatory response is, you know, uh, working out. And then um, later on, the smooth muscle cell migration and then cellular division, uh, neo intimal proliferation then happens and then restenosis again happens later on down the line. But what the drug does really is pretty much kind of reduce the inflammation, uh, arrest the, uh, the mitosis and inhibit the small muscle cell migration to the drug, uh, to, the, uh, to the area and that's what we're trying to do uh, or accomplish here with our drug-coated balloons. 
Again, this is another schematic, another slide showing that in day one, you have platelets and fibrinogen and thrombus is uh, occurring. And then uh, day 14, we're trying to uh, try to slow down the smooth muscle cell growth with the drug. And uh, hopefully by day 28, uh, vessel remodeling is there. So we really want uh, pretty much to have uh, the drug in the um, in the target area that we were treating to last these kind of to last at least uh, 28 days or even 14 days, so that uh, we kind of slow down the smooth muscle cell growth. So, what are the challenges of drug-coated balloons? And I think um, it's 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 um, calcium. Uh, calcium is a mechanical barrier, as you can see here. When you inflate the balloon, yes, you kind of open up the balloon, but there's a significant recoil in our um, in, 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 the, in the artery itself, and therefore it, it didn't really do anything, pretty much. Um, uh, Dr. Um, Federico Fanelli is one of the uh, esteemed Italian interventionalists out in Italy, and he kind of, him and his team uh, kind of put out a, um, a, a what, what happens to the drug in terms of uh, calcium, and uh, he graded this in times of CT, and as you can see, as the uh, calcium increases, the, uh, there's a higher uh, late luminal loss and there's a lower patency uh, when there's really high calcium that's present. And uh, this is just a slide, it's a, it's a crazy slide, but it's, it's like kind of, it's all about the lesion length, uh, it's another uh, part of, uh, uh, kind of impacts the, uh, the, uh, the performance of the balloon and the drug. And these are all just studies that are out there, and it just indicates that you know um, the longer the, the the lesion is, the less patent the the vessel would be in a later time. So again, there were some studies done, and thank goodness for Dr. Kapoor to give all that information because I'm not really a numbers kind of guy. I just want to just I'm just practical. So, um, but here at Zella shows that uh, you know in the uh, drug coated balloon uh, at 12 months uh, you, you see that there's 78% and the lesion length is almost uh, uh, 200 millimeters. So that's a significant uh, situation there. Um, again, um, with the drug coated balloon, as you can see, there's the, uh, I, I told you earlier that there's an excipient that's used. Uh, here's another type of uh, study that will show that. Um, use of excipients really help uh, transfer the drug to the target area and that uh, there's less uh, resonotic than without the drug. Um, okay, just the clinical uh, angiograph characteristics that uh, they used for the study in terms of what the, the two balloons that are out there after you approve now. Uh, lesion th lengths, again, were not too long. They were about uh, uh, you know, 8 to 12 uh, centimeters in length. And this is some of the data here. After 12 months, you can see in the Levant, which is the impact, uh, which is the Levant 2, uh, after one year, 74% are still patent. And uh, impact SFA after one year, 89% is still patent. So this is very good for us because, you know, usually, like I said, when you just, just do regular PTA, uh, after one year, this, it's about half, uh, um, you know, um, the, the synodic error is about 50%. So uh, patency is about 89, which we will take. Again, just to another schematic slide to just show that information. Um, and then, of course, there is a, um, some um, balloons that are out there, like I said, uh, Impact, Lutonix, a Sterilex, is a Spectronetics balloon that's, uh, that they're testing out right now. And, and I just put this slide up because, you know, uh, we, these guys that come up and tell you, they'll, they'll sell you anything, really, and tell you that the balloons are the best. But uh, because it's uh, independent core lab uh, adjudicated information, we could really trust the information that they provide us. So this is just want to let you know that uh, you know what uh, what we're what we're using in terms of the balloons are evidence based and uh, and and uh, shows us the patency rates for the year for after a year. Now um, I know Dr. Vishal kind of uh, put out there that uh, when we're putting stents in, um, you know there is a, a, a high rate of, of restenosis because of the bending and deflection of the of the SFA. And you can see as you get older here. Um, your, your, your arteries and the legs uh, become more tortuous. And um, actually, the, the whole thing is after, uh, you know, there's, there's a high rate of restenosis um, uh, in terms of this, uh, of this stenting after two years, as you can see on the, on the image on the, on the right there. So the rationale for the first choice of implant-free approach is to avoid ISR, and that's what the drug-coated balloon allows us to do. 
Um, so drug-coated balloons and SFA rationale, the patient, peripheral arterial disease is a chronic and lifelong disease. Uh, SFA, popliteal arteries are the predominant culprit vessel lesions, but they are very torturous in that sense. And claudicans usually live longer lives and have, then they, they expect a high quality of life. So uh, we want to offer them uh, the best uh, innovation out there. And drug-coated balloons preserve future, op uh, uh, future options for revascularization. Uh, just a few slides, um, just to show you. Uh, I know uh, we have a stenotic area here in the SFA. Uh, what we did here, just to reshape the uh, the lumen itself, was basically using a directional atherectomy. We put the drug-coated balloon, and you can see that uh, after ballooning, uh, there is a slight dissection, but uh, fairly smooth in what we want to do here. Um, again, another case study, lesion here. Uh, it's right here, we atherectomy balloon and very smooth uh, in that sense. Um, just to uh, kind of self-promote, we were one of the first institutions Mount Sinai was to, uh, to use a drug-coated balloon about two years ago, and we've been using it ever since. We were also part of uh, uh, the, the significant trials for the drug-coated balloons. And to conclude, uh, drug-coated balloons are going as the desired therapy for treatment for a chronic and burdensome disease like PAD and associated anatomic challenges. Drug-coated balloon technologies are still evolving towards better drug transfer efficiency, higher coding stability, and limit embol embolization. Evidence and quality of evidence continues to be the benchmark. Uh, most drug balloons have passed their proof of concept test, uh, but there is no, DC, uh, no DCB class effect. Each drug-coated balloon is to be judged upon the existence of the value of its own data, and that's because there is really no head-to-head -head competition or, or a study between the two balloons. They, they kind of uh, separate their own data and they tell you that uh, what their data is in terms of um, patency. And um, that's it. <laughs>